Hi, this is Ian Siegel and welcome to The Blues Kitchen. Ian Siegel is an award-winning British bluesman and guitarist. His new record, All the Rage, released in March of this year, continues his exploration of Americana, gritty blues and countryfied ballads. We catch up with Ian in the middle of an extensive European tour to discuss his love of Muddy Waters and his band join him for a blistering live performance of Muddy's Rich Man's Woman. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for weekly episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Ian. Yes. How you doing, mate? Good. Welcome to The Blues Kitchen Thank once you. again. Once again. Are you well? Yes, thank you. How's, so uh, far. how's life in uh, Amsterdam? I love it. Based these days, isn't it. I love it there, yes. Uh, much less stressful than living here. <laughs> much less stressful. What's the average day in, in Amsterdam when you're not playing? Well, well, I'm on the road a lot, so normally when I'm home, I stay home. I don't really <laughs> venture out much. Or I just go walking around. It's a great place to walk. Tiny city, 850,000 people. That is tiny. Compared isn't it? to 10 million here. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. So congratulations on your record. Thank you. All the rage. Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, when and where did you do you record the record? In Amsterdam. Um, always planned to record it with my friend Jimbo Mathis from um, Mississippi, mm. but uh, it was easier to bring him to Amsterdam than it was to take everyone out to Mississippi. But um, okay. also the studios are very good in, in in Holland, generally speaking. But weirdly enough, Jimbo found the studio. Uh, Drive-by truckers had recorded there. Their friends are his. And they recommended it, so it wasn't. I didn't even find it myself in my own <laughs> city, and it was excellent. I mean, it was actually it's quite a similar vibe to this. Pretty kind of natural and uh, you know natural, good room sounds and yeah. lots of fancy rugs around and great old <laughs> equipment, all valve, you know, and all, everything recorded to tape. Sounds like that kind you of know. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was cool. Um, listening through to the album as well. I mean, it's definitely got a lot of textures and colours going on. You've got, you know, obviously. With your stuff, there's always a rootsy blues sound somewhere mm -hmm. in there. But there's some ballads and there's some darker moments. There's even, um, I've got it written down here, Sweet Stephen Hill I was listening to last mm -hmm. night. Beautiful female vocals. Mm -hmm. um, when you're writing for a record like that, because you're like 12, 13 albums in that? I think 12, yeah. Yeah, 13, I mean, maybe. do you feel wildly different? Do you have to go out of your way to write, I suppose, is what I'm getting at? Or do you still write in the same way that you did 13 albums ago? Pretty much. I, I tend to write when I have to. I, I don't write unless I need to make an album, which is terrible. I wish I did, but I need a bit of pressure to force the inspiration, if I you like. I think that's a, a terrible thing. You, we need to give ourselves deadlines it, it's sometimes. Not, it's not uncommon. You know, Some people can sit and craft a song to order, and some people have to wait until inspiration hits, and I'm one of the latter, definitely. But this time, Jimbo got me writing several months ahead instead of a few weeks ahead like I normally do. Mm. So it was a bit more preparation involved and I really let him produce. He, he, I gave him the reins. Normally I've got at least one hand and I just went, okay. Is that the first time you've done that? Yeah, fully, 100%. Yeah, even with Cody Dickinson, and I was always sort of 50% involved and I just went, okay, you tell me what to do. Don't let me like mix my own vocals or like just ignore me. And actually, yeah. b because we prepared in advance, it's the first time I've rehearsed songs before going into the studio. And Jimbo made us do that. He's like, you've got to go in at least... Pre-production stuff. At least four or five times, just go and run through the songs. Which meant we went in and we did everything in one or two takes. Live as well? All live in one And the room. vocals live as well? I'd say about 50% of the vocals are completely live. There was no separation in the room. Cool. So everything... Session just like we're going to be doing shortly with you guys. Right. But yeah, we do one, maybe two takes, and Jimbo would say, right, you got it, next song, move on. And we, we... Before you have time to start thinking about what you're doing, the, kind of, yeah. the sound that comes naturally, before yep. you get in that studio head mm -hmm. and like, oh, we've really got to know this performance. Yeah, I totally get well, that. Well, we're not making Sgt. Pepper, you know what I mean? <laughs> we're, we're making a, basically a bluesy roots album, and, and you want to keep that atmosphere and edge in there. What's the longest you've ever laboured over a record for? I've never been more than four days in the studio recording. Really? Never. Just blitz it. Maybe five days tops. This was done in four afternoons. So literally four, six hour sessions. So that's 24 hours. I like saying we recorded it in 24 hours. It's a very Mississippi way of recording as well. I mean, that's how it's always done out there. Anytime I've recorded with guys out there, everything is done really quick. 
So you're just about to hit the road as of today, actually. Yep. This is your London show this evening at the Chess Cafe. I feel like we need to give a bit of a shout out to your band as well, because your band are hot. So who's in the, the touring lineup at the moment? Yes, well, my usual guys, that's um, Dusty Cigar on guitar, Raphael Schwederson on drums, Danny Vanthoff on bass. And Thanks. we also have Raphael's other band, really his main band now, because he's defected from me. <laughs> um, uh, the Dawn Brothers, who yeah. we're so happy to have. Well, I'm kind of in two minds about having them on before us every night because they're so good. <laughs> they are honestly the, one of the best bands I've seen in years. Yeah. So they're going to be destroying me every night. <laughs> but it's good in a way because it will, it's good, you know, it's good to get someone to push you a little bit. <laughs> in a short while, you're going to be doing a Muddy Waters tune yeah. for us. Before we get on to Muddy, I do like to ask our guests, um, can your earliest memories of music? I mean, I can remember being in my family living room and there was always the record player out, there was always vinyl playing. Feel free to romanticise this as much as you well, want. Well, I, I sound like I am, but I really, <laughs> I do remember, and I, the Rolling Stones were always being played. What era Stones are we talking? Oh, definitely 60s, because this would have been early 70s anyway. Yeah. And I, rem I distinctly remember, I must have been maybe four years old, I remember hearing Red Rooster. <laughs> Oh, so really early stuff. Yeah, that was that was the first twelve bar to hit the charts, or yeah. hit, maybe even get to the top of the charts. I, I think, think so. Yeah, and I, I swear that's where my interest in blues started, and I definitely investigated backwards, you know, and discovered Muddy and Wolf. I, I I can remember being aware of the names Muddy Waters and Helen Wolf, at incredibly young age. So. And yeah. Unless I'm just making it up in my in my mind, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure that's the case, and I'm pretty sure it was via the Stones yeah. that I discovered it. That's exactly what it was for me. Yeah, and Muddy was the first name I came to actually, and the yeah, first I one think. that I started to explore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, on Muddy, you're going to do yeah. Rich Man's Woman. Yeah, and um, it's quite interesting because we've had Muddy Waters' son, Mud Morganfield, on the show, and you, oh, you play with him a lot. I played with Mud, and well, I played more with uh, Big Bill Morganfield. Yeah. But, oh, okay. And I played yeah, with no. many members of Muddy's old band. You know. A lot of people are kind of nervous when they come on the show to do something too obvious. Yeah. It's like, money isn't obvious, it's just a staple, it's like the cornerstone of the blues. But I'm interested to know, like we were saying before, when was the first time you heard Muddy? And in particular, maybe why have you picked this tune as well? Well, it's, there's, there's a lot of layers to this. First of all, I've been saying for a long time, people call us a blues band and we very rarely play blues, straight blues. not straight blues. I'd call us more Americana, if anything, because mm -hmm. we're very influenced by all different American roots music. But blues is definitely in there, and it's certainly where I come from musically. So when when I was asked to do like a cover song, there were so many things we could have done, so many different styles, and I thought, why not? Why not just do a straight ahead blues song? Yeah. You know? And the classic muddy slow blues, which you know, I, and I've copied that his signature slide solo many times, and I have on the new album. I do it knowingly, and it's a nodding reference. I'm not trying to rip anyone off. Um, you're supposed to get that, you know. So I just thought, let's do a, just do a muddy slow blues, not, not overthink this. And Rich Man's Woman is, is, is a fairly, it's relatively obscure compared to something like 19 years old or... Yeah. It is chess time though, isn't it? I think it's chess time, yeah. It's early 60s, I think, that tune. And I'd been playing it out in, in the... Uh, in the Caribbean with um, Rick Estrin and Joe Lewis Walker, we were doing that some nights, and it, it's one of the more obscure ones, um, but it's one I've I've done most of my career, you know. So it just seemed appropriate, really, and I'm 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 definitely finding myself drif drifting back towards more traditional blues, having spent years moving away from it. I, I find it's pulling me back in. <laughs> cool. Well, maybe it's time you could introduce your tune, if that's all right. This next song is an old Muddy Waters tune, one of my favourites. It's called Rich Man's Woman. Okay. Okay. Rich Man's Woman, take two. My baby mint coat. Yeah. With fur just to match her hair. I asked her out for dinner now. She said, Oh, that's just. 
just a common way I work hard on two jobs I said I'm making overtime every day Yes, I told you I got me a rich man's woman I said she's living on a poor man's pay She said it's just a common gift I saw her driving down the street, boys <laughs> She's refused to give me a lift I work hard on two jobs Yes, people, I'm making overtime every day Me a rich man's woman. The little girl, she's living on a, a poor man's pay. Living on a poor man's pay. Hey. 